Hey guys, Sean here from Tesla Family. Last summer, I shared a video with you showing how I turned on my new Tesla solar panels and passed along a tour of the Tesla app for solar. A little over a year later, Tesla updated the app with new energy plots, a new real-time power flow, and new simplified and detailed views of your system's energy data, including your home's energy sources and destinations. All right, let's check out Tesla app 4.0 for solar. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and upgrade the older version of the Tesla app on the energy side here to the new version that came out a few weeks ago here in September 2021. This older version has really grown on me in the past a little more than one year now that I have had my Tesla solar panels. I've really enjoyed viewing this app, taking the data, and as you guys have seen, if you've been following me for a while, I've been sharing my solar data with you over the past year. I've got several videos, including my six month review, my one year review, and then my seasonal solar reviews on my Tesla solar playlist. So check that out if you want to see some more information on the performance of my Tesla solar panels in the past year since I've owned them. This is the home screen for the older version of the Tesla solar app. There is an impact screen right here that shows your solar offset and energy offset with home usage and solar produced. Uh, I did charge my brother-in-law's Tesla Model X. That's why we had quite a bit of home usage overnight. And the solar energy screen, which really I love to see these X, Y axis traces of uh, time versus energy. We can view daily. I can add on my home usage my grid, how much I'm pulling from the grid and pushing back to the grid, turn those off. And I can also pull down daily, weekly, monthly, yearly, and lifetime energy usage data. Of course, we have the service screen too. I've never had to use this, luckily, uh, to request service for my Tesla solar panels, but this is how you would do it. All right, let's go ahead and update the app. I'm gonna close it out and then we'll update it. Okay, so I should mention that I am using an Android phone and it says there is an update available. It was last updated on September 8th. I think the iOS version came out a few weeks earlier and there was some trouble with the Android app, but finally it looks like it's made it to the Play Store and I can go ahead and update to a refreshed vehicle and energy homepage. I'm just going to be showing you the Refresh Energy homepage because in my one year review video linked above, I said that part of my top five most favorite things about having Tesla Solar, one of those top five, I think number five, is actually having the Tesla app. This is really one of the coolest parts about having Tesla Solar, very smooth app. Let's see if the refreshed version is just as good or maybe even better than the older version. All right, we are now installing we don't have the fastest internet connection here, especially when we have multiple persons in the household streaming. Sounds like I need to get in touch with Starlink. That's a future plan. All right, here we go. Now we can open. Here we go. Okay, the app is now open. It says explore the Tesla shop or Tesla. Okay, here we go. So here's the new version of the Tesla solar app or Tesla energy app actually, because we're talking not only about solar panels or solar roof, but we're also talking about Powerwall. And I am adding that to my home very soon. So currently we have 200 watts of solar going into my home and 400 watts from the grid to make up the 600 watts required by my home right now. We are near the end of the day, so the sun is starting to set. Uh, that's why our solar is much lower. So a nice animation here, although I, my initial thoughts are I really don't like this better than what the old app had. 
I just thought it was more clear. There's a lot of wasted space here. Uh, as far as the animation is concerned, we're only talking about maybe 10% of the screen here animated, where before it was a much larger animation, I thought, animation area, and more clear where your power was coming from or being sent to. Anyways, we have the My Home screen. It says I am generating in green. That is kind of nice. I am generating. Then we have the energy screen, the impact screen, support screen, and then ooh, some documents, which sets a new screen there. Let's click around on the animation and see what that does. So wherever I tap, grid or solar or home, we get a loaded chart of the data for that particular selection. Let's just go back to solar and then I think what's we enter solar. Looks like we can swipe sideways to change dates and we'll also be able to access home and grid usage from here as well. So 6.4 kilowatt hours to the home today and 20.8 kilowatt hours to the grid. Energy destination that works out to be 24% to home and 76% to the grid. I kind of like seeing those percentages. That's nice. All right, here is yesterday. So I think it's a little bit easier to switch between your days with the new app. I'm getting some kind of slower internet connection warning here. But we're back to today, and can I overlay home? Let's see. Okay, so they can overlay home and grid usage by clicking on this button here in the top next to day. So by doing that, I can show home usage on top of solar and let's see net grid usage as well. Okay, here's home usage compared to solar. Here's solar compared to home usage. And here is grid with solar. Back to solar, so we produced a total of 27.3 kilowatt hours today. 6.6 6 6 kilowatt hours went to my home and 20.8 kilowatt hours went to the grid. You can see the percentage of the percentage associated with these energy destinations here a little bit below that area. If I click on home, 52.7 kilowatt hours of home usage. Again, I was charging my brother-in-law's Model X. So most of this 46 kilowatt hours from grid is associated with EV charging. And here's grid usage, 46.1 kilowatt hours from the grid, 20.8 to the grid, and 25.3 kilowatt hours of net usage. So a bit different than the old Tesla app. I can't say I like this as much as I do the old version. I can switch between days by just doing a quick swipe. Here is yesterday's data. And the day before, we can just keep going back to see the day-by-day -day data. We can change time scales in the upper right from day to week. There is a slight error here where I actually did produce on Wednesday and Thursday of this past week and I had to email Tesla Energy Customer Support to figure out what's going on with that and uh, not sure why the data is missing for those two days. It's approximately 55 kilowatt hours though. But for the week, you can see the low day, 16.1, the average, and the high production day for the week, changing time scales to the month. So far for the month of September, we've produced 488 kilowatt hours. Again, there's about 55 kilowatt hours missing here in the data. Hopefully we can get that remedied. Our low day on the first with five kilowatt hours and our high day looks like right there on the second with 42.4 kilowatt hours. You can tap and hold and get the individual data for each particular day too, if you'd like to do that. And we can also go to year, so far for 2021, 7.23 megawatt hours. 
and we can see here by tapping home usage was 6.37 megawatt hours and net grid usage this is pretty cool this shows that for the year we have pumped 860 kilowatt hours or 0.86 megawatt hours back into the grid so we are in the negatives for net grid use which is great that means our solar panels are working excellent and are covering 100% of our needs. We can also switch to lifetime. And we can see for the lifetime we are net negative 750 kilowatt hours for grid usage. 11.54 megawatt hours of solar generation and 10.79 megawatt hours of home usage. We can also look at impact and this actually hasn't changed so it just does a comparison of your solar with your home for the day showing that today our solar offset was that we were 12% powered and only 51% energy offset. Again this is mainly because we were charging an EV Skipping the two days we were missing data, let's go to Tuesday. Also some EV charging before our trip, we were gone. And I'm trying to find a day here, here we go. Let's go all the way back to Sunday where our solar outproduced the home usage. We did a lot of traveling in the past week and that's the reason for that. Let's change time scales to the week. There we go, 110 energy offset for the last week, for the month. We're 78% energy offset. We're missing about 55 kilowatt hours in there though, so that would help make up a good chunk of that. And here, we are 113% energy offset, that's great. So we're generating more than what we need for the home. And lifetime, slightly less, 106% energy offset. So the impact screen really hasn't changed from the old app to the new app, which is really cool. And in the support screen, if we click on that, we can get links to the Tesla website for troubleshooting your solar panels. Or System performance information. Understanding your system performance. Or some other quick links like to billing, ownership transfer, and visiting support. Otherwise, you can request service by clicking on the link below. And then the document screen will give you any documents with your Tesla Energy account. These are all my solar purchase agreements, and interconnection agreements, uh, HOA acknowledgement, things like that. So these weren't available with the old app. It's kind of nice to have it available on your phone so you don't have to use a desktop now with the new app. So it is in the evening, we're not generating any solar. You can see underneath my home, it says that we are in standby mode and we are pulling energy from the grid. But we did generate 27 kilowatt hours today. And I think tomorrow we're not planning on doing any charging. So we should end up net positive on energy production uh, starting tomorrow over the next several days. I hope you enjoyed this tour of the refreshed Tesla Energy app. This is version 4.0.2 of the Tesla app. Here's the new version of my Tesla referrals. Here's my vehicle referrals. Thank you, Bryant, for using my Tesla referral link to order your new Tesla. Now, as of September 18th, 2021, Tesla is not providing any more supercharging miles for Tesla referrals, and the referral program is greatly limited. Now, the only perks for using the referral link uh, which is still pretty good. It's actually, they've increased the, the award amount. 
if you are going to order Tesla solar roof and not panels, panels have been dropped from the referral program. If you want to order Tesla solar roof, $500. You get a $500 award if you use my referral link after system activation. Here's a huge list of my current solar orders. And we have some installations as well. And again, because I have more than 10 installations, I was awarded a Tesla Powerwall. And I'm looking forward to having that installed very soon. So thank you to all who have used my Tesla referral link to order Tesla Solar. All right, guys, thanks for watching the video. If you really enjoyed it, make sure you subscribe to Tesla Family Channel here on YouTube. We really appreciate all of our subscribers and everyone who watches our videos. Thank you very much. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment down below and I'll get back to you soon. Check out all of our other videos as well. Also, follow us on Twitter at Tesla Family Chan. If you use my referral code to buy Tesla Solar Roof, you'll get a reward after system activation.